Um, I've been in a hospital as recently as a year ago uh, for a week, and, and I thought they were wonderful, and they were. Uh, but that was me. Uh, but now I watched what happens in a burn center. Uh, and this is the most professional and kind and compassionate group of people I have ever come in contact in my 66 years. I will carry this with me forever. They have been overwhelming in their uh, care for the kids, and they have put up with the hordes of family and the goofiness of all of us bouncing off walls and walking in and asking questions out of the blue, unable to get through the doors and all the different things they got through, walking in and out of rooms, forgetting out to putting on the uniforms and all the other stuff, and they have always been there uh, and have just been incredible, and I will never, ever, ever forget it. Um, before I walked in here, I got a text from one of the night nurses. This is Ruth. And uh, I think it's Ruth, I hope it's Ruth, uh, who said that uh, she wanted to bring cookies and a card, and she wants to bring it to the waiting room on her day off. This is a lady who spent time uh, after the first day rearranging her schedule so that she could provide continuity of care for the kids. So um, I never want to forget that. And, uh, um, and that was my opening statement, and thank you all very much. And now, if you have other questions, then I'll see if I can do that. Would you like to talk about John and, and Janet? What a terrible, for people who don't know them, what a terrible loss this is. John and Janet uh, were a happy couple. They had gone through hell in their lives over the years. They've had a lot of interesting things happen to them. And, uh, but they have always, John is the most positive human being that I ever had the pleasure of knowing or even being related to. Um, in the darkest of days, John always seemed to find a cloud. And, uh, and he passed that along to his children. His children are positive. His children are unbelievable. Uh, he and Janet uh, were the most incredible parents uh, in terms of teaching their children uh, a work ethic. Uh, if you need something, go work for it. Go earn it. I mean, they didn't enable their kids like I've enabled mine. I can tell you that. Uh, I was I was fortunate to have Thanksgiving with them uh, several days ago. Most of y'all have already seen the picture because you've already stolen it from Facebook. Uh, in which uh, we, we thanked everybody for, for, for a lot of things. And one of the things that, uh, that we were able to thank them for was the fact that they had shown us uh, how to raise children and to do it in such a way that uh, uh, they could be proud and that anybody that knew them would understand that they were dealing with real class. And if you have any idea how many hundreds and hundreds of kids they now know and have touched in Nashville and uh, Memphis and in Louisville and in Indiana and places where they have lived, it would blow you away. The Facebook right now, I mean, the, the, the number of kids that are just coming in over and over and over again, the people that are coming into this hospital, uh, and they get in because they don't have cameras. Uh, so uh, it's, just been, it's just been unbelievable. And uh, they have lifted the kids' spirits beyond anything that, that we could ever do. And so uh, that tells me this is how well the parents were. Uh, Johnny was a great architect. He, interestingly enough, he did hospital architecture. So John was a big part of Methodist. John designed the emergency room at uh, University North. He was a big part of West Cancer Center. Uh, he has his hand in a whole host of uh, different projects uh, in Memphis and in other places in the medical field, which is pretty cool. Do you want to talk about the brothers? Because you don't have to know them to get a sense of what wonderful people they are just from looking at the pictures of them. It, it seems to give an indication of what they were like. They were genuine uh, people. Are you talking about the, the boys. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're talking about Jerry, Jerry Wesley, and Brent. Yeah. Um, they were genuine. They loved to have fun, but they, they worked. They worked. I mean, they, everything they've gotten, they've gotten on their own. I mean, they started a band at the age of 14. They created their own Summers Brothers band. They played. Their voices weren't all that great at the age of 14 because they were breaking and changing. But ultimately, they changed. They became accomplished musicians. 
um, they've cut CDs. I mean, they uh, one of the producers. They came to Nashville to be closer to their music. I mean, they're. Uh, the producer, uh, Paul, and I can't think of his last name, Paul is, is actually here and, is, and came up to see them. Uh, they have uh, uh, an incredible uh, array of uh, talent. Uh, and, and when they're not playing music, uh, one of them's a bartender, and uh, one of them is a sous chef. Uh, one of them's now at uh, uh, Catherine and Mary's in Memphis. You're from Memphis, are you not? Yes. Which, so two brothers are here. One moved back. Jared is back, and uh, was at Catherine and Mary's, and uh, uh, and is uh, the last time I talked to him, he was excited about the fact that he could handle 13 types of pasta that had to be cooked at different levels, and feeding an entire group. And I don't know if you've been in that restaurant before, but it's a it's absolutely phenomenal. It's a zoo, and it's run, it runs full time, 24. And they learned uh, at Hog and Hominy. That's where they began, and so. Uh, uh, Branson is an Eagle Scout. I mean, everything they've done, they've done well, and they've made friends along the way, and they've just simply been uh, an incredible group of kind and decent, caring human beings that any parent on God's earth would be proud of. Yeah. Jim, I'm Natalie from the Tennessee and in the USA Today Network. I'm sorry about the loss of your brother and his wife. Um, you. Could you? Talk a little bit about how the boys are doing. I know that Jared's been released. Power, Wesley, and Brand. I will talk in terms of spirits. I will let the doctor uh, talk in terms of their condition. Um, yesterday was the highest of the highs and the lowest of the low. Yesterday, uh, three ventilators came off, and it was the most incredible because I wouldn't expect that for a long, a much longer time. And then at the same time that the ventilators came off. Literally within a short time after that, and they're sort of getting uh, used to possibly breathing on their own. You're wondering whether they're going to be able to handle it or they're going to have to come back. Then I get the call from the sheriff's department that says they're uh, John and Janet uh, were confirmed dead. And so I asked the hospital, "Is there any way?" Yeah. I got this. I got this. Um, is there any way that you can put the kids together uh, in the same room so I can have this conversation with them? And we did. We, we, Jim and I went in and, and uh, told the boys that their mom and dad had passed and the sheriff had told us and could, made the confirmation. And um, they, we had had this conversation with them earlier in the day that this was a possibility. And the boys were very verbal about um, knowing that this was probably coming. So I think uh, they were pretty, you know, even though you were sort of prepared, the, the confirmation was very difficult for them. Um, so last night was a, a, a tough night, but this morning has been just really a uh, completely different day, not to make light of the situation, but I, these boys are just incredible. And to reiterate what Jim has just said, they are resilient. They are the most um, positive, glasses half full, just amazing boys. And uh, they've lost their mother and father, and we've lost the fam family members. and. Um, but they feel they're already talking openly about the loss. They're talking about what um, might be moving forward will look like for them. So we feel really optimistic for their future in spite of how horrible this has been. Dr. Summit. <laughs> Let me introduce myself. I'm Blair Summit. I'm one of the plastic surgery faculty and the medical director of the burn unit here. Um, I want to thank you for your comments about the staff. I know that's greatly appreciated and they, and they very much enjoy the work they do. It's very much a team approach up there. It's, it's a smaller community of physicians and nurses that work up there and they're very dedicated to what they do. And so I want to echo your statements as well. We're very proud of our staff and, and the team that we have up there. I'm happy to answer any questions about the boys. I am not their actual surgeon, um, 
but I know about their condition well and what's going on with them. Can you talk about Wesley and Branson since they're still at the hospital? Right, I just actually just was rounding up there and talked to both of them. They're both doing great. Um, I actually think Wesley was my waiter recently at a restaurant. I just, when I went in there and talked to him, I realized, I know you. Um, but they're both in very good spirits. They both had, from the standpoint of their injuries, their burns are not terribly large. Wesley's burns are a bit more. They involve his arms and his hands and some on his face. They both had, you know, I mean, Branson's hand, his burns are mainly on his hands, some on his face. Um, they both had inhalation injuries. There's different grades of inhalation injuries. There's what think of as a moderate inhalation injury. They're doing much better from that. If you speak to them, their voices still sound very hoarse, but they're doing quite well. Um, they both are going to need surgery. They are both scheduled for surgery on Monday. Branson, at least one of his hands is going to need to have the burn removed and have some skin grafting, possibly his other hand. Wesley, it's more his arms. He's going to need some the burn removed and skin grafting to his arms. This, with respect to the burns on their faces, faces tend to heal beautifully, and I looked at both their faces. Their faces are going to heal just fine, and, and I don't think they should have a whole lot of long-term scarring from that. What about Jared? I mean, he's out, so it sounds like he's... I, Jared, Jared passed me in the hall. I haven't actually Jared. spoken to Jared. He was actually up in the waiting room just earlier. He looks pretty good. Um, and I can tell you, just looking at his facial burns, those are going to heal beautifully. And my understanding is his hand burns are not terribly bad. His burn was about 2% of his body. Um, matter of fact, when I went up, Wesley was, uh, or actually no, it was Branson, was playing cards with a bunch of his friends. So that gives you any indication how well he's doing. He does have a tube in his chest, called a chest tube. While on the ventilator, he did get some air around one. I mean, every patient's different. These guys, I, I can tell you, I think because they have such a strong family, that makes a big difference. I agree with their positive attitude. I mean, I come in the room and he's reaching out with his bandaged hand to shake my hand. I'm kind of having to go, uh, uh, you know, I got to get a glove on. But they've got just, they have a good spirit about them, and I think they're going to do very well. That's anytime you have a positive spirit, you're hardworking, you want to get back to your normal life, you do very well. them at one point if, um, if there was something they wanted to say. And uh, um, I won't remember it, so I'll give myself a little bit of a note here. Uh, Branson just simply said he just wanted to thank everyone for their love and their support. And that's all he had to say. Uh, Wesley uh, had, the same, had the same thought, but the other thing he wanted to get across to to everyone was the fact that that weekend um, was a wonderful weekend. He said, my mother and father, they were absolutely happy. They were the first time they'd been with the family uh, on a vacation uh, in four years or so because of work and all these other issues. And that, they, and that he wanted everybody to know that my parents, I believe, died happy. They were the happiest they ever been. Um, and then Jared basically just simply wanted to thank everybody for the outpouring and the support. And so, uh, Do you want to talk about anything about how they got separated or was that even known? I don't really know. I've heard different things and I have not chosen to. The lawyer in me wants to ask a lot of questions. Uh, the uncle in me says shut up. 
and we'll get to it in time. It's not necessary to worry about that right now. I, I think uh, one of the concerns that, that we all have is that when they get separated, then do they carry things with them about, well, how did we get separated? And should we have done this and should we have done that and second guessing and I can tell you just from talking to the kids that there's been some second guessing yeah. uh, and and that is is uh, that is so tragic I can't tell you what that's like and it's just uh, it's just very tragic so right now uh, what we've tried to focus on and and, uh, and then I didn't come in here to talk about me but but I will tell you that my my parents died uh, when I was you know I lost my father at five. We were living here in Nashville. He was a dentist. Uh, moved to Murfreesboro. And my mother died when I was 16. Died here at the St. Thomas Hospital, in a brain tumor. She was an artist for Gus Meyer. And um, sat around with my brothers and said, well, guys, we're all we got. We're going to have to keep each other, say each other behind us. Uh, this is our lives going forward. And that was not true, because we had family that reached out. My aunt, for 50 years, has had us at her house for every Christmas, every holiday, that she would give Mother's Day cards to. And so they, her children became our brothers and sisters, and it's the largest, most incredible extended family you can imagine. When we show up for Christmas, there's 35 people, and friends come with us to go up there, and it's like, seriously? Who are these people? Who are you all? How do you all do this? Uh, and uh, and Jared and Wesley and Branson have all been a part of that. And that group will be here tomorrow. I'm sorry, doctor. Uh, the hospital Feel will free. have to deal with it. And uh, uh, my family has flown in from New York. Miami uh, is coming up from New Orleans. Um, every member of my family is here. So they will have uh, probably three helicopter mothers they will have a control freak ex uncle, which would be me. Um, they will have people looking out for them always. Always. One more question. Can you just talk a little bit about what it was like, you know, playing the waiting game, not knowing, and how the support from friends and family kind of helped you get through that? I mean, I can't imagine that waiting. I have. That was, a, that was very difficult because we not only did the boys need an answer and closure, um, Jim, his brother, and sister-in-law were, were technically missing, although we sort of knew that um, we might get the word that, that they were deceased. It was very, very difficult. The waiting over the last 48 hours has been before last night, 48 hours prior, it was absolutely difficult because we were waiting and waiting to hear, uh, get a phone call from the sheriff. And um, we make repeated calls and finally we got the word last night, so. Yeah, I do want to speak to that. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I made contact with uh, Detective Bohannon uh, probably Tuesday afternoon, sometime later that afternoon, and I learned uh, about what had happened when I was in a mediation here in Nashville on Tuesday. I was in a lawyer's office um, and got a call from the secretary saying, well, uh, your, your three nephews are at the Burns Center at Vanderbilt, and oh, by the way, your uh, brother and his wife are missing. And so we frantically began looking for information, and of course, you couldn't get through to so many uh, uh, facilities up there because um, all of the uh, communication lines have been fried. I talked to Senator Norris a few minutes ago who said that their entire uh, fiber optics for that whole area after we, the state put in millions of dollars over the last two or three years just fried uh, and they weren't able to get to anybody and all of the various agencies had fallen back on what they used to do about five years ago when you were on different kinds of radios and all this other stuff and you different frequencies and nobody could talk to one another, there was no phone. I think they ended up putting up cell towers, temporary cell towers so that people could get up there. Um, but this sheriff, um, for whatever reason, uh, seemed to adopt me and my family 
and maybe he did the same with others. All I know is that I felt like he was doing. I felt like he was working for me. Uh, he was that. He was that good, and he called me um, several times a day. Everything he found or didn't find, he was transparent. I recall when he called and said, "Well, Mr. Summers, we went. We finally got up to the cabin where your where your family was staying. There were no bodies in the cabin. And that was great." Uh, and then he said, but there were three bodies that were in the same general area. Well, that was terrible. And then uh, we went on, and then he said, do you have, do you know of anyone, did, the, did, the, did your family travel with a dog? And I said, well, yeah. And he said, how big of a dog? And I said, well, it was a husky. I'd say medium, maybe like a female golden retriever that size, because I didn't have one of those. Uh, and he says, uh, he says, this was a small dog. And, and the the, uh, the corpse that we found was huddled with the dog, uh, and, and I say corpse, and I use that uh, uh, loosely because I think uh, the way the we sent photographs to the uh, to the sheriff's department, he called me back. He said, Mr. Summers, the, the corpses cannot be identified even with photographs. We can't even weigh them, uh, and I knew then what we were talking about. And, uh, so I think probably that impacted me more than anything. Yeah. And, and also, there was a period of time where um, we kind of went through the possibility, well, maybe they got to a different location and was able to, they don't have, they didn't have cell phones. Uh, one of them had given, uh, I think John had given the cell phone to Branson. And, um, so we, we went through this period of thinking, well, maybe maybe they are somewhere. So you asked the question about how it was. It was sort of a high, high and low. It was a roller coaster. Roller coaster. Uh, 